All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Everybody doing good? Good. All right. Oh, you said blessed? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm literally losing my hearing. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> Christy's having to almost make signs for me and hold them up at the house. So. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not very nice, is it? Yeah. They, I, I need that one, too. That's exactly what I need. <laughs> no, well, good evening, everybody. Good to see everybody. We, and everybody's doing good. Vicki said blessed. So now I hear, th- I, I hear that. I hear that. I hear it out loud. All right. Prayer requests like we always do. What can we help you pray about? Oh. Hey, what's going on with Craig? Just sick? Okay, we absolutely will. Okay, all right. We'll definitely pray for Craig. You bet. Remember Elvin? Elvin's not feeling too hot. I went and seen him today, and he's not feeling very good. And went and seen Gary and Elma, and uh, they're doing good, just trying to stay safe. And and uh, El- uh, Elma's still t- getting her treatments, and uh, she's still fighting cancer. So let's remember her. What else? Yes, need to remember Sherry for sure. Yes, sir, Buster. Awesome. Oh, wow. Okay. Shanna? Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. What's his first name? Okay. Absolutely. Amen. 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 I hear you. We was talking about that earlier. Sometimes when your brain's thinking and your clock's ticking internally in your brain, it's hard to shut it down sometimes. So I, I feel you. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Hey, I know. It's tough. <laughs> All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely. Pray for you, Christy Lee. How's your dad feeling? Still sick? All right. Pray for Randy as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Pray for Miss Shirley. Yes. Yep. Amen. Amen. We're praying for you for work. Absolutely. All right. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Good. pray. I know. Tamara, and she sees it all, and she could tell the stories, I'm sure, that curl her hair. <laughs> See? She knows it all. That's awesome. <laughs> but no, we just absolutely need to pray. for and, and pray for the teachers. I mean, not every school and child is blessed to have, and I'm not just saying this because she's here, but uh, to have teachers as caring as Tamara. Although, if that helps, you know, I mean, no. <laughs> No, but I mean, honestly, you know, it's, it's neat when you've got a lot, and there's a lot of good teachers out there, but to have teachers that take that and personally care for them, I mean, that's, that's just huge. That is really huge. Anything else? Amen. Amen. 
Awesome. Absolutely. We'll be praying for her. Continue to pray for her. So, absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. We sure will. We sure will. Of course, you know the country. You need to pray for our country and leadership, incoming leadership and all that stuff, and, and lift our leaders up and uh, just trust in the Lord and lean on His understanding, not ours, you know, and uh, just uh, remember God is on the throne. Put your hand up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Been in Washington D.C. Yeah, and, and so I'm going to say this: when if if you come across, um, I don't want to be careful here. If you want, if you come across some Facebook messages and things like that, that are they seem extreme one way or the other, just just. Use discernment, you know, when it comes to those, and and because uh, they you've got them from one way to the other as far as what's going on and circulating out there. So uh, just use discernment. God is He's on the throne, and and we just need to remember that because if um, if you let those get to you, it can freak you out pretty quick, you know. So you just got to remember that. All right, anything else? Dave, will you pray tonight? Amen. Amen. Okay. So, does anybody here like to watch movies or go to the movies? All right. I love going to the movies. Now, let's just have some fun real quick. If you're if you like action movies, raise your hand. Okay. If you like romantic movies, raise your hand. I knew Christy at least had one. <laughs> All right, there's two, maybe three. <laughs> All right, what about Marvel movies? Yeah, okay. There we go. All right. All right. All right. So with every movie, I think you know there is a beginning or an introduction, uh, a middle part, right, or the storyline, and then an ending, okay? Now, how many of you ladies, and possibly gentlemen, like the Hallmark movies? <laughs> Amen. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're tough, right? Now, some of them aren't bad, right? But no, I mean, ladies love the Hallmark movies. Now, when I was at Fort Jackson, I saw a lot of Christmas movies because I... There's like two channels we got that came in pretty good. or We had more channels than that, but I just mean it was background noise for me. So it was a lot of Christmas movies. And every Christmas movie would do what? They, or any movie in particular, would have this great introduction, right? Or this great beginning that kind of sets up who the characters are. Then they have the storyline, which plays through. Then the Hallmark movies and the Christmas movies all have a happy ending for the most part, right? They do. I mean, they, it's just the way it is. And I've been really praying and, and trying to, to, so this is just clear as can be when we study Revelation, because it's really not that bad. Where we mess it up is in the details, right? Now, it's good to be detailed, and, and we've got to know these things, and we're going to do that. But I want to break this up into chunks for us and kind of re-go over some of the things before we talk about what we're going to talk about tonight. 
So chapter 1, we know it's the introduction. We know that, that John is given a revelation from Jesus himself, and that's how it's written out. And depending upon what kind of Bible you have it in the top, it probably says introduction. And that's exactly what it is. It says we're introducing, so think of a, think of a movie right now. I, I want to go out as far on the limb as think of a sci-fi movie, all right? Think of this, think of it this way. 2,000 years from now, if God does not send Jesus back, okay, 2,000 years in the future, do you, do you think it'll be crazy? Do you think it'll be wild, right? By, I mean, just to think about things? So we're going to be talk. we would talk about things if God did what he did to John to one of us. We would be, fast forward to 2,000 years in the future, and we would be trying to describe things that are going on in the future that we have never seen before. Does that make sense? Think about that, or just put that in the back of your mind when John is describing some of these things in Revelation. Does that make sense? He is describing a futuristic event that took place, and only God knows when that time is. And so when John describes some of these things, it's, it's the future. He's describing, the, and he's doing the best he can for what he was familiar with. Does that make sense? All right, so let's just kind of, again, just kind of put that in the back of your mind. So the introduction, chapter 1, that, and, and it's huge, and it talks about uh, Jesus giving this revelation to John. It talks about uh, who Jesus is, and, and he confirms who he is. And it's written, this letter is written to the churches of that time to be circulated through to, to, to introduce them to this same thing, this future event that was to take place, all right? So that would be like our introduction, if you will. Now, the storyline, really, if we're thinking in movie terms, I think, the big story would be the hard part that comes with revelation, would be what? The tribulation. There's so much time, so seven years, and the Bible talks about that in detail, the seven years in detail. And then it breaks that detail down even further. So I think that's where we lose some of that stuff at, because we've got to realize as Christians, we're really only in the introduction part of it, depending upon where you fall your view of that, right? We are only in the mere introductory part of this futuristic movie, if you will. So last week we talked about, and we're, excuse me, verse, or excuse me, the very first week, we talked about the four views of Revelation as a whole. Now, what I mean by that, beginning, middle, and the end, okay? The four views of Revelation as a whole. We know that there's the preterist view, all right? The futurist view, the, idol, the idol, idealist view, excuse me, or the uh, historist view, all right? A historic way of looking at Revelation. So remember, that when we say that, that's looking at the Revelation as a whole, beginning, middle, and end as a whole, all right? As the whole movie. The tribulation part of that is the bad stuff, all right? That's when all the, the crazy things are going to happen to those that are left here on earth. That's the tribulation. That's the seven-year period that from chapter, really, 5 through 18 talks about in detail and then breaks it down into even more detail, okay? That's the tribulation. That's the seven years. Now, of that tribulation, there are three views of that, which is Pre, mid, and post. We talked about that the other day. Pre means we will be removed from the rapture when the really, really bad stuff starts happening. And that's judgments, but I don't want to get too far into that, okay? When those really, really bad things start happening, that means that view is saying the church or Christians, Christ followers, will be taken up into heaven. They will be raptured, all right? They will be raptured away. Mid-tribulation or mid-trib point of view is saying that you're going to endure more than likely up to three and a half years of the troubles of that time, and then you will be raptured away or the church will be raptured away. And then post-tribulationists believe that we will endure the whole thing, the whole seven years, then at the end, during Christ's second coming, we'll go up together, all right? And, and, and so that's that viewpoint. So again, there's four viewpoints of Revelation as a whole, three viewpoints of tribulation, the seven years, the bad stuff, okay? So I want to kind of put this up into chunks. What we 
need to be concerned about as pre-tribulational viewpoints, if we have that view, if we hold to that, is really the rapture of the church, okay? Any Christian or Christ follower really needs to be concerned about the rapture of the church because that's the most important part. Does that make sense? Any questions or anything? I mean, is it making sense kind of how we're going along? Because I, I just really want, because I think when we think about it, we start, we start having all these questions. Well, what about the, the, the angel with four heads and, and wings and wheels and all this? And we start thinking about all these things and we're trying to put it all together. And that's good to know, and we're going to go through that stuff, but I think if you just take Revelation and you break it up into pieces and look at it like a movie, maybe it'll make more sense, okay? So, so that's really what I was thinking about today, how we can, can do this and, and have it make sense where we're just not totally taken away. Because honestly, and let's just be real, some of the things that we're going to talk and discuss and what we've already talked and discussed is theory. We're doing our best to try to understand something so amazing, it's outside of our scope. These little pea shooters, things we have in our skulls, I mean, can only understand so much, right? And, and eventually, one day when we get to heaven, we will see and have full revelation of everything that God intends for us to have. So chapter 1, again, is the introduction of John, Jesus, and the letter to the churches, okay? Now, chapter 2 and 3, what we talked about, is talking about the churches, they're described in and addressed in how they operate or how they were, you can say famous for, but how they were known, right? Because Jesus knows how the church operated, and he called them out on it. He just told them exactly how. He's just like he knows how this church operates. He knows our heart in this church, and not just this church, but every church everywhere. He knows how we are. He knows how we operate together as a whole, as all of us together. Chapter 4, okay, when we get into that, describes the awesome worship scene that takes place in heaven, all right? It's the amazing scene of just seeing Jesus in heaven, seeing heaven for what it is, and for God being just as absolutely amazing that he is. And John is trying to understand it, and when he writes chapter 4, I can just see him going, Holy Spirit, give me the right words, because what I've seen is just absolutely incredible, I mean, to see what he's seen. Paul, when he talked about, when he was taken up into the third heaven, he said, no eyes can understand or ears hear what the amazing it was in heaven that he saw, that God allowed him to see. So when we think about these things, again, we are seeing the creator of heaven and earth. We're seeing God for who he is. And, and, and it's just, it's almost too much, I imagine, for John to take in. And I think if we think about that, it's much the same way. Now, for those of you watching online, if, if there's anybody watching online, we're thankful for that. Drew gave me the thumbs up. I, I want to say the same thing to you. If there's anything that doesn't make sense or you have questions, please comment below. Uh, we want to make sure we do that. Stay tuned because when we wrap this up, I've got some really great announcements I want to talk about for next Wednesday and for this Sunday coming up. So please, you're part of our family too. Like I like to say, and I finally get to say it, we're one church in many locations. <laughs> and it may be in your home, but that's all right. That's where the church is. When two or more gather, we're there with you. So we want to make sure you are part of us as well and feel at home too. All right. So chapter 4, again, going back, describes the amazingness that is God. Chapter 5, and we haven't went there yet, but we're going to, is talks about when Jesus is opening the scroll at God's ordained time. Okay, it's really what chapter 5 is, and that's really when we start to see the, the revelation or, or the tribulation clock start ticking, okay, if you will. Now, if you remember from last year, the year before, 19, I think is the last time we went through it, the end of 19, early 20, uh, there's an interlude, all right, there's an interlude during part of Revelation, and it's almost like a pause, if you will, in the action. And it sets the stage up even more, all right? So, so again, that's just a real high overview of, of really what we've studied so far. But tonight, what I want us to concentrate on is the rapture. I want us to concentrate on the rapture. I want to go back to Matthew chapter 24. And, uh, and then we're going to pick up, if you've got your Bible with you, hopefully you do. Yeah, we're going to be in First uh, Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, of course, we're going to be in Revelation, which is easy to find. So we're going to kind of flip back and forth. Uh, between the two. But again, the three views of tribulation, the seven years of suffering, are pre, mid, and post. Pre, mid, and post. Okay? 
So tribulation, inside the tribulation. Now, now the tribulation, the word of that means great suffering and trials. Great suffering and trials is what tribulation means. It is seven years of judgments. Seven years of three types of judgments. You have the seal judgments, you have the trumpet judgments, and you have the bowl judgments that God, or excuse me, Jesus will actually open up at just the right time in the proper order. And that's really when all hell will break out on earth. And that's really what happens. The Bible talks about hailstones. It talks about all kinds of just horrible things. And people are still going to say, no, thank you. I don't want any of Jesus. And I think about that, and it just blows me away. How could anybody not want anything to do with Jesus, especially when their life is falling apart? What do we as Christians do when our life starts falling apart? We typically drop to our knees and say, God, why me, right? That's the first thing we do. But some people, and I can't imagine this personally, are so bullheaded that they are still saying, eh, whatever. I, again, it just blows me away because God is not only the, 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 the God of first chances, second chances. God, will, he wants to give every chance that he can to every person until it's too late. And for some people, unfortunately, it is too late for them to wait. And it saddens me and, and, and it breaks my heart. But this is the hope that is in Christ. And this is really what I want to bring and something I want to do better this year is offer that hope to those um, that may have a loved one or someone that they know dear to them that maybe uh, took their last breath without them knowing. It, here's what it comes down to. It's ultimately between them and God, whether or not even in that last breath they took, whether or not they accepted Christ or asked for Christ. I mean, so let's just give it to God, okay? Because remember, when we get to heaven, there is no sadness in heaven. There's no disappointment in heaven, right? Let's just remember that God gives, and I truly believe this, this is me, every opportunity that they can. But there is going to be those that are going to wait for too late. But let's let God decide, okay? Let's let God decide who waits too long and who doesn't. All right. Please do. Speak, buddy. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. God gives us chances until we take our last breath. Yes. Thank you. Please talk, buddy. I need that. Okay. So, again, getting back to the rapture. The rapture. What do we know about the rapture? Has anybody seen the great Kirk Cameron movies, Left Behind. Those are really good. Now, I say that jokingly because, but they are really good movies. Uh, um, the Left Behind series, especially that one, when, when you see of planes flying and all of a sudden pilots and everything, there's nothing left but a pile of clothes. That is truly what's going to take place during the rapture. I mean, it is. The Bible talks about, you know, two will be, to, two will be in the field and, and one will be left, the other one's going to be gone. And, and their clothes aren't going with them, you know? Uh, I, I mean, it is going to be a scary time on earth. We think what we're going through in America right now is scary. It's nothing compared to half the population or however many is, is just gone. It's just completely gone and, and just nothing left but their clothes. Families split apart in half. Whole families gone, you know, are, are, are just going to be missing. They're not missing. They're in heaven. But the world is going to freak out, and it's going to be in utter chaos. That really is what the rapture is. It's the taking away. It is the church, Christ followers, being caught up into heaven. So let's put this into context. Chapters 1, introduction. 2 through 3 is the churches. Chapter 4, we see the amazing worship of, of, of Jesus in heaven. And then after that, really after chapter 3, you don't hear the church mentioned anymore. The church is no longer mentioned in the book of Revelation until you get towards, what is it, 19, I think it is, 20? And, and then we kind of pick it back up. But it's no longer mentioned during that time. And we're going to add some scripture to this and, and hopefully uh, clear it up a little bit. All right? But the rapture is the taking away of God's believers, of those that accept Christ as Savior. All right? So, rapture. We've seen the Kirk Cameron movies. We know piles of clothes are going to be left. We know families are going to be split up. We know all these things are going to take place. Uh, buses are going to drive off and crash. Planes are going to crash down. All these crazy things are going to take place. 
Do some of us struggle with that and think, how can, how can that be? Is, is it right? Is that fair for a plane to crash because both pilots, captain and co-captain, were taken away, or co-pilot and co-pilot? I mean, in the flesh, do we think that? Or as Christians, solidified in God's word, we think, well, they've had opportunity. Now let's break it down even further. Can we as a church, not just this church, but every church, say, you know what? We preached God's word, and we preached it in a way that we warned as many people that came in through the door with as many services that we could that you've got one chance. You've got to accept Christ as your Savior. Now let's break it down even further. Have we as individuals done everything we can do in our circle influence to warn as many people that we can and to reflect Christ in our day-to-day life? I had a phone call the other day, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. It was painful because it was so long, but this girl was um, very talkative. And, and I was able to, what I like to call, sprinkle a little Jesus here and there just over the phone. She knew I was a pastor. It just kind of came out in conversation. And, and then we started talking, and, and I was, we was dancing all around the subject of it. And, and a really close friend of her died of cancer, and she was talking about how she helps take care of those, uh, her friend's two kids. I said, well, that's awesome. You know? I said, I don't know if you're religious or not. And she said, well, not really. And then that was my, kind of my way in to, to sprinkle a little bit here and there and to encourage to not come at her hard, you know, but, but I, and, and when I say it was painful, it was painful in that, I, I mean, the call took a long time, and she was probably the fifth person that I talked to, and so my patience was probably not as big as what it should have been, but I still saw that opportunity to, to plant and water a little bit, and, and, and I really had to pray about it. I just wanted my internet, can- or my cable canceled, whatever it was. But yet God's like, no, I'm going to give you this opportunity. What are you going to do with it? So sometimes, even in the midst of our busy, crazy, exhausting days, we've got to slow down and say, all right, God, I'm I'm just going to do what you have called me to do, and and I'm going to plant or water, or I'm going to say what what I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to say to this person in a way that's going to represent you, you know? So so we've got to do those things. And, And what I mean by that is there's going to come a time when some of our loved ones and our friends aren't going to be with us. And if we think about that in the flesh, it saddens me. And that is what motivates me more than anything to keep pressing on, to keep talking, to keep um, pushing it out there. And, and even this year, to even go even further with, with what little influence I have in my little part of the world. I want to make the biggest difference I can. And, and, and you know... Me and Christy's talked about this quite often, and I don't mean to get off subject, but it really ties into what we're getting at, in that if, if, if you've got a platform, you know, whether it's social media or whatever it is, use it. Use it to, to plant and water seeds as much as you can. If you have that opportunity to have lunch with coworkers, you know, you can't hit them over the head with the Bible, but you can plant a little bit, right? Your, your life can, can emulate Christ. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be like Christ, little Christ. That's what Christian means, little, little Christ. And, and we need to do that as much as we can, even when you've had a long day and you're just trying to get your internet canceled. Amen? That's what we got to do. Life is, is, is not easy and life is hard, but there are going to be people that's going to be crying, that's going to be devastated, that's going to die in the midst of the tribulation. It, it is no joke situation, and I don't mean that to scare, I mean that to warn. And, and I think, honestly, that's why this middle section of, if you're looking at Revelation as a movie, that's why God goes into such great detail through Jesus into John to write down for us to know and study. Because, honestly, we as the church, if, if, if in true we interpret the Bible the way I believe we do, and, and we are not going to be here, verses, really, 5 through 18 don't apply to us. We have nothing to do with it. And it's scary when you get down into it, the hell and then damnation that will rain down from heaven for those that are left here on earth. It should motivate us to try to bring as many people that we can with us or plant and water seeds. Because ultimately what? God gives each and every one of us free will. And what we do with it is up to us. But we've got to do our part and try to bring as many people or help that we can uh, to do our job to bring Christians to, to, uh, to Christ, to bring them to Christ. All right, so 
We've talked about this. We hold a futurist view of Revelation, right? A futurist view of Revelation. What that means, that it's a future event that is yet to take place. Let me back up a little bit. The preterist view, all right? The preterist view is a, a, a view that Revelation already took place and was fulfilled during the Roman Empire after Christ, okay? After Christ, that it has already been uh, it's already been fulfilled, that basically we're just on, in, in a loop, if you will, sometimes, okay? You know how a movie would just play, autoplay over and over and over again? That, that, that's the historist view. But, but the preterist view believes that it's already happened, it's, it's already taken place, and we're just kind of, our reels running out, slapping against the back, all right? And we're just living life, kind of wild-like. But the different views should have scripture to back everything up. So the preterist view. All right, the one that says it's already taken place. Revelation 1 1. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants the events that must soon take place. Now, again, God's definition of soon and our definition of soon is two different things, right? They also go to Revelation 1 19. Write down what you have seen, both the things that are now happening and the things that will happen. Now, we know what took place in AD 70, right? AD 70, the temple was destroyed. The great dispersa happened, meaning all the Israelites were disbanded from Israel. I mean, it was all hell had broken loose in Jerusalem at the time. It, it was like, man, they're probably thinking, wow, Revelation just took place. And, and they were scattered everywhere. And we know that not until, was it 1943? Somebody help me out. For, when was it? 48, all right. That Israel was reunited and people started coming back. And they're still coming back because, man, they went to every parts of the earth. So from that point of view, you could see where they thought, man, maybe, maybe this took place. Now, the futurist view, what we hold to, Revelation being a future event, we have some, some scripture to back that up. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, 1 Thessalonians 1.10 says this. And they speak of how you are looking forward to the coming of God's Son from heaven, Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. He is the one who has rescued us from the terrors of the coming judgment. Now, contextually, if you take that and read it, I could see how they're talking about what's going to come, right? What is to come. Or when you look at it as a whole, eternal salvation. I could see either viewpoint of that, all right? But many of us hold to that that is a forewording that uh, God has rescued us through Christ, has rescued us from the, the, the horrible terrors that are coming through the three judgments that would take place in Revelation. The next scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 10. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 10. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us, Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive when he returns, we can live with him forever. Whether we're alive or dead, we can live with him forever. And I talked about this a couple weeks ago, Revelation 3.10. Revelation 3.10. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. Now, look at where it's located, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. That is not after the church is not talked about, okay? So many ascribe that that is saying that, you know what, he is going to save the church. He's going to conserve the church, if you will, preserve it, however, and, and that we're not going to have to suffer the horrible judgments. Now, let's be honest. Are we going to see suffering in our lifetime, I believe, even holding to that viewpoint? Yes, because it's got to get bad, right? It's got to get worse before it can get better. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not getting political, okay? But we know a little bit about the Antichrist, all right? Think about it. If he's going to come and unite the world, the United States is not going to be the shining star of, 
you know, amazingness that doesn't, is not going to look to the Antichrist as their Savior too because it's going to. So I say that to say this. America is going to have gone to Hades in a handbasket, all right? America is going to be crazy. Now, whether it's this lifetime or, or another one, think about it. The whole world is going to have to look to a quote-unquote Savior in the Antichrist and think, man, he can, he's going to be the one to help us, all right? So, so we, that's why we need to pray for whoever is in office, we need to pray for them and pray for each other and pray for the peace. And, you know, and, and, and I'm going to say this. When America backs away from Israel, look out. When America stops supporting Israel the way we do, be careful. Look out. Yes, ma'am. Please. Get bad. Sure. What? Okay, how should we, and that's a great point. How should we end every prayer? Who said thy king? Did somebody say thy kingdom come, thy will be done? There you go. Yes, that's exactly right. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We can pray for everything. I want to have peace in my lifetime, right? I want my children and my grandchildren to have peace. That's my prayer. However, I want God's will and not mine. But, I mean, yes, I, I think that's a very good point because we do. We, we only want nothing but the best for us and ours. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So, so great point. Let's think about that. Let's unpack that a little bit. We think it's hard living where we're at now, right? And let's just be honest. How do you think those that were in the Holocaust thought living hard was? They know what living hard is, right? I mean, emaciated down to nothing, literally starving to death. That's hard. I think it's hard if I don't get dinner at 5.30. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's just be honest. I, that, but you're right, Sid. I think that's a very good point. What, you know, every generation has their own idea of what hard is. And maybe as the world dilapidates or goes down or whatever, and I'm, I'm not saying that, I just mean as, it, as we continue to go. Yeah, I can see that. It, there you go. Yeah, that's very good. Ad adaption. I don't know. But just always remember that because nobody knows, but there are very telltale signs. The third temple, I can't say it enough, the third temple, those darn red heifers that are over there in Israel right now, that they, that they have made genetically, they're perfect, no defects, and they need those to consecrate the temple. They've got them in their back pocket. They're just waiting. Naturally, through breeding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, it, it, right, and, and I think that's it. So, you know, we've got certain things that we've got to look for that we can look for. And, and, and again, I encourage you, always look to Israel, always, because that is, you know, that's God's homies, <laughs> right? That, that's his people, and, and we've got to look to that because the Bible is very clear. Um, if, if this is a service, is this something that interests you, uh, a person that's very well knowledgeable and he's associated with Calvary Chapel, is Don Stewart. Um, he is a phenomenal eschatologist, end time study. And uh, I was goofing around today and I was watching a thing with him and Greg Glory, and he was talking about that. And, he, and I, I mean, he said the same thing. You, you want to see the times, look to Israel for everything. And, and, and it's so true. Um, 
And I, I digress, but, you know, huh? Oh, sorry, Buster, yes. Mm-hmm. What do you, okay, what do you mean? Like as far as? Mm -hmm. Right. But to, I think to Buster's point, are we going to, is this what you're going to, you're, we're going to see some really bad times, but are we going to realize they're bad times? Mm hmm So to your point, so like when the Bible says, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart, that's a little confusing, isn't it? I mean, does that, is, is that hard for us? Because I, I, I think I get what you're saying. Um, when we read that, when God hardened Pharaoh's heart, you've got to remember, God is not going to do anything that that person wouldn't have done. Meaning that person's heart, that king's heart was hardened. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and he could have changed his mind, but he didn't, and, and nor was he going to. Does that make sense? Because if... Very good, yeah. I, I, I completely agree. I think we do. We're, we're used to what... Okay, let's look at it this way. Think about the internet. How many of us here remember AOL and dial-up? Yeah, all the funny noises and ding, ding, bing, you know, and then you get like a picture 20 minutes later that's fuzzy. That downloads down, right? Now we're upset if Netflix is locked up and clocking, right? I, I mean, so yeah, to your point, we're acclimating. Dave? Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No, that's perfect. No, I appreciate that. It, it's so true. Right. Yeah. Barry was just a jerk, <laughs> you know? And, and, and the way it came out was, yeah, God hardened his heart. I mean, God didn't do anything that guy wasn't going to do already because he, he gives us free will. The guy was just a jerk, right? And it took those 10 plagues for him to even consider. And then what? After he got over it, what did he do? He chased after him. He was a jerk. <laughs> we can say that and be okay. So, so again, 
these verses that, that give us this, and it should bring us much relief when we read these verses and, and hope to that, all right? It, it should. The idealist view, right, is it's in Revelation, it's a symbolic interpretation to Revelation that it's a repeated cycle. It's what I was talking about a minute ago. It's like the movie's just looping over and over again, right? It's, it's taking place. We're just all going to live it. We're going to go through it, and we're going to live it and go through it. It's just the movie's looping. We're just kind of like Groundhog Day for, throughout the generations, all right? Uh, the, the historist view, right, is ones that have taken place uh, throughout, the, er, throughout the ages. Excuse me. It's a survey of church history. It's the same thing, right? These things have already taken place, and they'll continue to take place. Now, what I thought was interesting in my study today, I never realized this, uh, but according to, uh, to one scholar, Wycliffe, Knox, Tyndale, which if you are familiar with Tyndale Publishing, uh, Luther, Calvin, Wesley, Edwards, Whitfield, and Finney all held to this viewpoint. Now, whether or not that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what one scholar pointed out. Maybe it is. Huh? To, to the, uh, the historic viewpoint, that these events have taken place throughout the ages. Yeah. Because, okay, let's just go back a little bit. I think we talked about this a week or so ago. The abomination of desolation, the, the, uh, Daniel chapter 12, right? That did happen, all right? It did happen in AD, or, yeah, AD 136, I think it was. Uh, a ruler came in and he sacrificed a pig in the Holy of Holies, desecrating that. B.C. I'm sorry, that would have been B.C. Desecrated that. So did it happen? Yeah. But again, we hold to the fact, to this futurist view that revelation has not happened. That is a futuristic event that we as a church are going to be raptured away. All right. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now, the word rapture in Latin means caught up. All right. But did you realize the word rapture does not appear in the Bible? It doesn't. That's a word that we've used. We've kind of coined that, right? Anybody know of another word that doesn't uh, appear in the Bible, but we talk about it quite often? Oh, yeah. I I mean, yeah, they didn't go on many vacations, do they? They were too busy plowing, huh? (laughs) Retirement, amen, 401K, right? (laughs) How about Trinity? Trinity does not appear in the Bible, but we know it's true, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So people are going to argue this with you all day long. Ultimately, it comes up to, and it goes right back to what Dave says, it, it's, it's up to the person if, if they want to accept it or not. Does that make sense? You can hold to whatever viewpoint you were, but for me and what I know and study and, and in all selfishness, I don't want to be here when the bad stuff happens. I'm just being honest. You know what I mean? So I want to hold to that point that... I'm going to be raptured away, and those that I love and get to worship with on at church. So, so let's talk about this for just a second. We get this word rapture, and really it comes to us from Paul written to the church in Thessalonica, and it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Paul says this, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like the people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living When the Lord returns, we'll not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will caught up, raptured into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we'll be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Okay? Do we have any issues with reading that? I mean, does anything kind of come to us that... Yes, Sid, go for it. Uh, Mm-hmm. No. What does the Bible say in John? To be absent from the body, present with the Lord. So it's a, it's a, what it is, it's a reference to them being dead is what that is. Confusing, right? And, and I'm glad you brought that up, because that's what I was going for. Yeah, because we read that, and we're like, what do you mean they're asleep? Are, and great point. That's where a lot of people grab the purgatory. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. I don't believe in soul sleep. Not at all. Huh? Where's our bodies at when we're dead? In the ground, right? Nasty out, however old they are, right? Or if we cremated, they're burned up and we're ash. Doesn't matter either way. All right? So, so let's qualify that. And, and I'm glad you brought it up because you've got to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 50 through 53 because this brings a lot of questions. Well, what about their bodies? Well, what do you mean? We're gonna, they're going to rise before we do and all these different things, right? I mean, what, what are you talking about? So listen to what Paul says to the church in Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 50 through 53 says, What I'm saying to brothers and sisters is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Remember that. Our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in a blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. When Christ came back after the resurrection, he had an immortal body, right? We are going to have the same thing. Those that are in heaven right now, now how they look and how that works, that's for God to figure out, right? They do not have their perfect bodies. We do not have our perfect bodies because my perfect body includes a flowing lock of hair, muscles like the rock. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, I I mean, it, it is. We don't have our perfect bodies yet. Only when we're raptured and that transformation takes place at that time will we have our perfect bodies. Now, again, how that works... That's for God to figure out. I, I mean, right? But, but for what's going on right now in heaven, they do not have their perfected bodies. But Christ does. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't know. That's a good point. I mean, you're right. And, and we preach it a hundred. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. So, so, so when I want to freak ladies out, I said that. I mentioned that one time during a Bible study. And I said, what if you go to heaven with the body you have now? And all the women were like. <laughs> it's immortal. Whatever that looks like, let, it, let God be the judge of that. <laughs> hey, you know what? It don't matter because there's no sadness in heaven. Doesn't matter. It's perfect. That's right. All right. But no, that, that, that's a good point. It, it is. It is. Because you always hear that. You know? Yeah, I'll, bald people always want hair. Or, you know, I always want muscles. So, <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, right? But, but do these things make sense a little bit? So, so the rapture, when that takes place, is when we get our immortal bodies. Let's, let's call it that. Good point. Yeah, you're welcome. That's when we get our immortal bodies. And it's not just us. It's those that have died before us, right? So again, now there, I don't want to confuse this. The rapture is not the second coming of Christ either. We should know that from our last study. It, it is not the second coming either. Any questions about that so far? Oh, no, 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 that's good. Drew, what you got? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord? I, hold on. 
I should know this off the top of my head. Now, Sid, what was you going to say? Yep, 5'8", yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. What's up there? Hanging out. Being who they are. Huh? No, 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 you're fine. No, this is good stuff. All right, where, where are you reading at? What chapter and verse? What translation are you reading out of? Is it the New Living? That's fine. Okay. That no and no and, and I mean that's that's why I always ask. So yeah, because sometimes that translation can 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 deal with that. Does that make more sense hearing it that way? Okay. And and yeah, and, and that's just yeah, sometimes. Now now remember the New Living Translation is translated at an eighth grade reading level. And 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 it's to to make it easy for us, right? And that's what I, I mean, me personally, that's what I love about it. The NIV, there's other really good ones, ESV are phenomenal. But the NLT just kind of breaks it down at a at a at a uh, lower reading level, if that helps. And for me, it helps me out tremendously. All right, so yeah, I need that. Christy's laughing at me because she's thinking I'm covering my butt. But <laughs> no, it's true because I mean, yeah, I mean, I I need it dumbed down. All right, this stuff's tough. Right. All right. Anything else, Drew? Did you have a question? Okay. All right. I mean, is it kind of making sense? Because really, if we can understand the introduction, the, that part of the movie, if we can understand, um, you know, the Raptor, the Raptor, that's a Yamaha, forgive me. <laughs> it's a four-wheeler. <laughs> All right. If we can understand, if we can know, understand the Rapture, huh? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm a gearhead. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yes. So that, now remember, no, and that's a great point because we're thinking in, or at least me, let me, let me show you my movie, all right? Thinking in my, my mind. Here's my movie. My movie is, and mom, if you're watching, just, just love me anyways, Okay. So, so my, my movie in my mind is, so my dad is buried at the VA cemetery, right? And in my movie, my dad is very slowly coming up out of the grave and, and his body, and all of a sudden he's transformed. Like, we're seeing this, right? Like, I, that's how I'm seeing it, right? Take place. It's going to happen so fast. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter where your bodies are. For those that are lost at sea, it doesn't matter if you've been cremated. The, the, it's going to happen that quick. You know what I mean? We're not even going to see it. It's going to happen so fast. It's just, I mean, that's what I'm perceiving it to be as. But again, in my movie, I see it in slow motion, my dad coming out, you know, and getting his perfect body and seeing him again. Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah, no. Could you imagine? Yeah. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's a great one. Yes. That, yes, that's perfect. Absolutely. And, and that is exactly, that's a great illustration, yeah. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, and, and it's all what we can identify with. Because really, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to identify it into our little pea shooters up here and, and have it make sense to us. But keep in mind, not everything in Revelation, we're going to be able to understand with these little things, you know? 
I mean, we can have a general idea, but for the most part, but, but for the big chunks that make sense to us, that's why I want us to understand it. Because we can have peace if the world is at odds. We can have peace during these times knowing that, you know, it doesn't matter. God's still on the throne. He, he ain't forgot me, right? He's still coming to get me. So does that help a little bit? Does that make more sense? Okay. Eighteen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's exactly right. I mean, honestly, that, that's exactly who 5 through 18 is for. It's for them that are left here on earth to know that, you know what? What we read and what they scoffed at, what they laughed at was true. But there's always good news in Jesus, right? Because we know that those that endure through the end, that, that don't take the mark, that don't do those things, can still get to heaven. They're going to have to go through some horrible stuff, but they can still get there. Again, God is a God of so many chances, Yet we want to pigeonhole him, and, and, and we want to, you know, people hate on him because, oh, it, you know, how can God be so whatever and, and allow murder and all these other things? You know what I'm saying? We're trying to understand something so amazing and so awesome, and God's like, man, I sent everything you need. You just got to trust. I sent you Jesus, man, and I just, just, oh, I just want to beat it in people sometimes, you know? Just love the Lord. Just love Jesus, and you'll, you'll be good. Trust. All right. Anything else? I know we kind of went all over the place, but I, I just, really, this is the main stuff. This is the meat of, of, of really what we understand. It, it's, it's really the beginning, the rapture, and the tribulation. Not the raptor, which is, I guess, a four-wheeler and a dinosaur. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, and a what? Oh, and a bird. Oh, and a truck. Thank you, Christy. Yes, that's right. That's right. All right. So for next week, we're going to take a break from Revelation. So what I suggest for you to do is get your questions, get to reading. Come up. Let's, let's, why don't we do a Q&A on not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. And then when we run out of questions, we'll just dive in. We'll keep going into that. Okay. But have your questions ready. Now, here's what I'm excited for. Next Wednesday, like we always do, I, I love it when someone wants to share with the church and we're sharing with our church at home. Um, Lisa is going to come and, he, and she's going to talk with us about being hurt in the church. So, huh? Either five minutes or two hours, all right? <laughs> it's completely up to her. But no, I, I mean, and, and I think every single one of us and those watching at home can identify with being hurt in church and being hurt by people in the church and being hurt by pastors in churches. And I'll apologize if I've ever hurt you. And, and if I have, please let me know because I want to make it right. Unless I smacked you upside the head with God's word, and then I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> All right? But, but I, I think that's going to be good stuff. And, and really, I, here's my challenge to you for next week. I want us to really open up and get real next Wednesday and talk about some of the things we've been heard about in churches. And let's just talk about it. Let's just be open and be honest. And let's just say, you know what? I've been hurt here. And if you've been hurt here, I encourage you, please bring it up. I, I mean, you know, we're just try to be real. And, and let's just be open and honest, and let's just talk about these things, because that's how you work through it. When we get hurt in church, it's the number one thing we do. It's so easy just to walk away from the church, if you will, and, and, and not go back or not feel whatever. So that'll be next Wednesday. Good point. Yeah, there you go. That's a good idea. That'll, we'll make that a talking point. <laughs> yes, she is. No, she is. I'm excited about it. But no, we'll talk about these things because it's real stuff that we all got to learn because, you know, I want this church to be full and COVID free. <laughs> all right. I, I, want, I want us to just pack this thing, not for numbers and noses, but so that we get so on fire for the Lord that if we get bit by a bumblebee, it'll take off singing there's power in the blood, right? I, I mean, there you go. That's what I meant. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> but you get the point, though, right? That's what I want. I mean, you know, I want us all to just be so happy we ooze Jesus everywhere we go, all right? See, I'll mess everything up. <laughs> Story of my life. Day late and a dollar short. 
<laughs> All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just love you. And God, thank you so much that we can come together. Father, that we can have an amazing time, that we can just be open and real and just say sometimes we just don't know and we just don't understand. Lord, but those are those times. There's many times, most times that you give us the answer. And this answer is in your written word. Lord, as we go out tonight, as, as we have things we've got to do tonight, Father, I lift up Buster, and I lift up all the things that's on his mind and on his heart and what he's got to deal with. And I just lift him up. Father, I lift up Miss Shirley and her sickness. Lord, we just lift up Lexi, and we lift up Brandy and Sherry, God. We lift up Evelyn. We lift up everyone, Father. Gary and, and, and Elma, we lift up Elvin, Father. We can just go on through our list, and, and you know our hearts, and you know exactly what each person needs, Lord. And we lift them up. But most importantly, we pray for your will to be done. Meaning when we pray, God, we trust you with the answers, whatever that answer is. In whatever way that you want to help, Lord, Father, we just give it to you. Lord, help us to just be so on fire for you that everybody we come in contact with just says, wow, there's something different with that person, Lord. And may we just be the light and the salt upon this crazy, crazy earth. Father, we just love you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with God and be blessed.